Good evening. It's a real pleasure to welcome you this evening to our service of Compline or Night Prayer. My name is Philomena and I'm a member of St John's Church in Egham and it's lovely to see you this evening. Now just before we begin with our service, let's get comfortable and be still together. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Now, just before we come to our time of confession together, let's have a think about the day that's just passed, all that's been said and done, and then we'll join together for our confessional prayer. Our confession. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins. Heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, Grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Compline Hymn Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you, with steadfast love, would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son. And Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Now we continue with our reading for this evening, and we're looking at the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Here are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, Peter's brother. James, son of Zebedee. John, James's brother. Philip. Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel. God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts, no gold, silver, or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveller's bag with a change of clothes and sandals, or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality, because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or a village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave the town. 
When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you, or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth. The wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on Judgment Day. Look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and as harmless as doves. Amen. Now our message this evening is a continuation from our look at the book of Matthew and from Margaret's excellent reflection from Friday night when in chapter 9 Jesus said, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. Tonight Jesus puts his words and, sorry, Jesus puts his words into action and he calls his 12 disciples and prepares them to become those workers and to go out into the towns around them. Up until this point, Jesus had been doing all of his father's work on his own as he moved around Galilee, teaching, preaching and healing. And during this time, his disciples had been watching their master at work. But now was the time for them to put all of their practice into action. It was time for their hands-on work experience. And Jesus prepared them all by giving them each authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. They were never expected to carry the work out in their own strength, but they were each given the authority and the ability to do so directly by Jesus. Also, it's not written in this gospel, but in both the gospels of Mark chapter six and Luke chapter 10, we hear this same passage and we're f further told that the disciples were actually sent out in pairs. They were sent out in twos, as they weren't expected to do the work alone, but as a team. This is because when God calls us to do his will, he always will give us what is required and he'll offer us people who will be there to encourage us and to support us. God never leaves us alone or expects us to get on with the work by ourselves. As the passage continues, Jesus then gives us some more important instructions. And I love the message version of these words, verses five to seven. It reads, don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. What great instructions. We assume that Jesus will send the disciples somewhere further afield, yet he tells them to go to the people in their own neighbourhood, just as he asks each of us to reach out to those in our own communities. We don't have to become missionaries and travel far away in order to spread God's word. And most of the time when he calls us, he wants us to be his hands and feet to those standing directly in front of us as we're bringing his light and his kingdom into our homes, into our workplaces and into our communities. Jesus then gives the disciples another instruction. He tells them not to worry about taking extra money or provisions with them as they'll receive all that they need. I wonder how they may have felt about that. Personally, if I were being sent, I'd be tempted to make a list and pack a bag with my extra supplies just in case. I like to be forward thinking. But then if I did that, I'd actually be being unfaithful to Jesus, not trusting in his words and his promise of provision and care. And that promise he offers to each and every one of us as he says in Matthew 6. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? 
These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. And that promise is something that each of us need to know and remember as the instructions and the mission that Jesus has given to his disciples tonight also applies to each of us. God calls his children to work together as a team, giving them the same focus and goal, which is the spreading of his word and the bringing of his kingdom to the world around us. As his church, we need to work together to put into action all that Jesus has done and continues to do today, as he calls each and every one of us to be his hands and his feet here on earth. So what's God calling you to do this evening? What's on your heart? What have you been trying to avoid? Whatever it may be, remember all of the instructions from our passage this evening. Also remember to place your trust fully in him and then you can look forward to your own kingdom work experience. Amen. We now come to our expressions of faith. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now tried as I am, today I I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe, and though you may be silent now, today I believe. And our song of Simeon. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We now continue with our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we've heard through our passage this evening that you both equipped and authorised the apostles to advance your kingdom here on earth. Within our own church of St John's, there are many of your apostles at work daily in all of the ministries that take place. And as a result, many lives are being saved and transformed as your presence and your influence are clearly seen at work. Father, we thank you for all who are involved in any way in the advance of your kingdom. And we ask for your blessing, for your protection and your favour to come upon each and every one. Amen. Dear Lord, as Christians we're called to spread the good news of your gospel to those around us, 
just as the disciples and the early church did so powerfully. Please help us to do this, Lord, by taking away our own fears and doubts, worrying what other people might think, and instead give us the confidence and the boldness that we need to speak your word and to let others know the truth of your good news. As we spend time in your presence now, Lord, may you fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit so that we may be authorised and equipped to bring your good news to all of those we know and to do the work that you've called each of us to do. In a moment of silence, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, have your way. We now continue with the words that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen conclusion. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I'm placing my soul and my body in thy safe keeping this night, O God. In thy safe keeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safe keeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. God bless you and may you have a peaceful night's sleep.